Are you thinking about launching a podcast or are you ready to relaunch your podcast and take it to the next level? Then you are going to love this episode. Thanks to you, the Creator to Leader podcast debuted in the top 40 on Apple Podcasts for the marketing category. You guys, that's incredible. And because I'm not into gatekeeping, I'm spilling the beans on the strategy I used so you can replicate it for your own podcast and have a wildly successful launch. So today we're diving into the foundation for a successful podcast launch. We're going to define a content strategy for your podcast that's anchored in storytelling. I'll walk you through the five key decisions that form this rock solid foundation. And yes, don't worry, this will be a two-part episode because there's so much and you will see how you can have both the strategy and the actual implementation of the launch. Because a successful launch, let me tell you, starts with a successful foundation. Stay tuned because in the next episode, we'll dive into the step-by-step process of launching your podcast, sharing the exact formula that landed us in the top 40 of Apple Podcasts. But before we dive in, I have to read you the review of the week. And this one came from the Do Over Mom. She said, Marketing Mastermind, Creator to Leader has reason to become one of my favorite podcasts. With authority and clarity, Eugenia leads listeners to create more impact with strategic moves without overwhelm. I'm excited to hear every episode. Then take the simple steps she shares. Ah, I'm so honored. Thank you so much. Please, please, please leave a review. I would love to feature you in future episodes. Welcome to Creator to Leader. Are you struggling to connect with your ideal customers online? Are you confused about the most effective way to market your business? If you are ready to become the go-to expert in your industry and stand out from the crowd, this podcast is for you. Hey, I'm Eugenia. That's Eugenia in Spanish, but you can call me E. My mission is to help entrepreneurs stand out online so that they can grow their businesses. I do this through comprehensive marketing strategies, impactful content plans, and storytelling leadership. We both know you are running on caffeine and big dreams, so let's dive right in. I'm truly so happy. This has been such a blessing. The reviews you guys left have been incredible, and I am so proud to be cultivating this community of leaders. And it's really all because of you, and of course because of God, because God is so amazing and so good, but really you have done the work. So the podcast, as you heard, launched in the top 40 in the U.S. It ranked top 10 in two other countries. And I've been preaching about podcasting for years. So now getting to put it in practice, my own framework with my own podcast feels like almost like the end of a season and the beginning of the next one. And It is no secret that podcasts are my favorite way to build your thought leadership, to build your authority, and it takes you from being a commodity to a go-to expert. It takes you out of price shoppers. And a strong podcast launch will not only make you feel amazing, because absolutely it will, but it will give you an injection of confidence. And it will boost your message to places you were never imagined. Because many people, when they're researching new podcasts to listen to, you know, they don't have to listen to a thousand episodes. So they go to lists. And the best list that you have available is the rankings, right? So when you make it to the rankings, your podcast is being seen by more people. So what does that mean? Your impact increases. Your thought leadership has a golden debut. And that's amazing. And my promise to you in episode one of this podcast was to build this journey with you. I want to equip you with the secrets and frameworks that are currently working for myself and are working for my clients. I don't want to be a one and done type of person. I want to share what has worked and I want to share new things that are working in new and better ways so we can be more effective, we can be more efficient with our time and with our ideas and with our experience. So of course, I'm going to share the behind the scenes so your podcast launch or relaunch, whatever it is you're doing, can be a success. In this episode, you'll have the sneak peek on the strategies that can skyrocket your podcast visibility and... We'll dive deep into the first part of a two-part series, and this is crafting a compelling content strategy. So now let's rewind a bit, because this exciting journey and this exciting result comes thanks to a very special mentor in my own entrepreneurial journey. And growing up, I never knew that having an online business was a possibility for me. I never knew that entrepreneurship was an option. 
I mean, it's not like people don't have businesses in Venezuela. It's not that I didn't think that I could do it. It was more like such a boring idea. I never saw like a business owner that I related to. I thought it was not up my alley. I thought entrepreneurship was reserved for engineers or doctors or lawyers and maybe marketers if they were very like data driven and only facts and, you know, in my mind, no fun at all, even though I've learned to love numbers for sure. Or maybe you were one of those people that really love numbers and were obsessed with spreadsheets and analytics, right? I thought that people that were more creative were not entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs I saw in creative industries didn't see themselves as CEOs. And even entrepreneurs I saw that were in more traditional, quote unquote, industries, but were more creative people. So let's say a doctor who was like very creative and very people oriented. They just saw themselves like, I just have my own practice. They didn't see themselves as CEOs. So they were like handing out flyers, relying on word of mouth. And there was never this notion of I am a business owner. So again, I never saw that possibility for my life. But I did want freedom. I wanted to have an impact. I've been so clear about that since I was 10 years old. And I remember exactly when I said, (laughs) 10 years old, I said, life is so short. When we're gone, there's, there's nothing left but the impact we left on others. Yeah, I mean, I was a very particular 10-year-old. So I also, growing up, I wanted to have agility. And I never felt excited about this corporate ladder structure where you basically map out your entire life at 24 years old. Like to me, that felt so unappealing. But then, you know, I started working. I did get different jobs. I worked in amazing companies. And I was just trying to find like, what is the thing I want to do career-wise that I see myself doing long-term? But when 2020 came, everyone's perspective changed, of course, including mine. So I started working from home and that freedom also allowed me to start working as an assistant professor for a college class in my alma mater back in Venezuela. And I was doing that from Miami. So I thought it was so cool. And also because I had the freedom, I was doing my like my corporate job and I was being super productive, but I just had the freedom throughout the day. And I just had this feeling throughout the day. And it was so inspiring to be able to also work on my blog, on my podcast. I really felt so in control of my time. So I went to my friend Google and let me tell you, life was never the same. There were people online doing the things that I was already doing in the corporate world. They were having incredible results. They were making so much more money and they had the freedom I craved. Not that my job was like a prison or anything. I think it's just more my personality, to be honest. So of course, I had to jump in. So my first venture was being a virtual assistant because the barrier of entry was so low. And I feel like being a virtual assistant, it's such a great beginner step when you don't really understand online business and you don't know what you want to offer. And as a virtual assistant, if you're smart about it and you find the right clients, right, because it's all about the client and the work you're doing for those clients, you can really dip your toes in different areas. So throughout that time, I had the opportunity of working with amazing CEOs from all different levels of industries and expertise and revenue. And one of those people was Whitney. And to tell you that Whitney has been one of the most pivotal people in my life would be an understatement. I could probably do a whole podcast episode only on lessons I've learned from her. But something specifically that changed for me after working with Whitney was learning about storytelling-based marketing. Whitney is a brilliant strategist. She's a powerful communicator. She is a true thought leader. She's so caring also. She's so human. And she has been able to create her own niche in all her business ventures for over 15 years of entrepreneurship. So Whitney had me train in her framework. And then I applied all those lessons to my own launch strategy for season two of the Fairly Bold podcast. And at the time, the podcast wasn't performing as I expected. And since working with her, I've gotten better and better at my craft. I've added more tools to my toolbox. I've refined my perspectives on the different tools I received. But I can tell you, working with Whitney was a before and after in my growth as a marketer. 
So why do I tell you this story? Because it is so exciting to look at the top 40 podcast launch and think, my goodness, I need the strategy. Send me a copy of your task list. And we're going to go there, absolutely. But before we go into the actual launch content, we need to discuss what makes a good launch. And that is the podcast foundation. I'll say it again. A successful podcast launch is the result of a strong foundation. This content strategy, this foundation, comes as a result of four key decisions. What is the goal of your podcast? What is the problem your podcast is solving? How does your content will solve that main problem? And who are you as a leader? So the first question is about the goal of your podcast. And there are two primary types of podcasts. We have podcasts that are designed for business and those that are pursued as hobbies. Since you're here listening to Creator to Leader, I assume that you are a mission-driven entrepreneur and you are deeply committed to making an impact. So when I mention podcasting for business, I am referring to using your podcast to amplify your message and your impact. A podcast for your business is rooted in solving specific problems for a specific audience, people that have something in common, and you are aligning your mission and your goals. In contrast, the podcast that is more of a hobby or just a creative outlet typically centers more around exploring a broader topic of personal interest. I want to be clear, none is better than the other. I feel like there's this shame of you have to have a purpose with everything you do. And sometimes we just want to do things because they're fun and they're creative and we want to express ourselves. And that is amazing. So go for it. If you need a permission slip, this is it. I'm writing it for you. Take it and run with it. Both types can be successful. I'm sure you can think of podcasts that are more generic and they're just entertaining. So go and do it if that's what you want to do. Don't feel pressured that it has to have this impact or be driving a business. I feel like that's unnecessary at this point. But our plan, I want to be clear, that is tailored for those podcasting for their business or for impact. That's who this plan is very tailored to. If you're only doing it for fun and creative, you're going to get value from this, but some of your key decisions might look a little bit different. So now that we have this question about the goal, we have to answer the second question, which is the problem you're trying to solve through your podcast. And when defining your podcast purpose, you need to consider both external and internal problems. People have both external and internal problems. External problems are tangible issues your audience faces, while internal problems are their emotions, are their desires. I don't want to get too deep into this narrative marketing or storytelling-based marketing, but effective marketing messages, they invite your audience into a story. In that story, they are the hero. If you think about a great movie, the hero enter the journey because they had an external problem. And through that process, they discovered the internal tools they needed to actually transform that reality, right? So, you know, you had a movie like Die Hard where the main character entered the building, entered the problem, uh, entered because of the problem of a failing marriage. And through the journey, he discovered that he had to be more humble and more appreciative. And then that's how he solved the external problem of his marriage. But he wouldn't have entered the journey if someone would have told him, oh, you just have to come here and become more humble. Like, heck no, I'm not going to enter that journey. And many entrepreneurs tend to focus solely on one type of problem. And we have two ends of the spectrum. Coaches, for example, might overemphasize internal issues like boundaries and self-confidence, but they never talk about why. Like, what's the tangible problem that makes you need to set boundaries or to work on your self-confidence? Do you promote boundaries and self-confidence as it relates to managing your energy and your time? Or are you helping women have better relationships with their family? Or are you helping men getting more promotions at work? I know a lot of coaches are so fired up about the internal transformation. I know that. But as you get ready to launch or relaunch your podcast, identify what's the entry port for this hero's journey. What's the external problem? And then we have the other end of the spectrum. And usually we have entrepreneurs that come 
from a very done-for-you type of background. For example, a web designer, right, who is overemphasizing the external aspects of web design, like functionality or recommended plugins, or should you build your website on Show It or WordPress? And it is essential to strike a balance because external problems often tie back to internal desires, right? So in this case, because we are so clear about the external problem, let's go back to the internal. Why does this person want the type of website that you offer? Do they want to take their brand to the next level so they can feel proud of competing in the big leagues, for example? Or maybe they need a website that focuses on conversion because they want to feel accomplished and close more sales with ease with the traffic that they are having. They want to achieve, maybe. They want to feel like, I'm a winner. If you don't have both clear, the internal and the external problem, people either won't enter your journey because they won't know what's in it for them, or they won't stay after a quick fix because there's no depth. So you might be talking a lot about self-confidence and boundaries, but people don't have a reason to enter into that journey. Or if you're talking a lot about how to install a plugin, people might not stay because a quick fix is all they needed. There's no depth. There's no reason to stay connected with your message. Now, for the third question, now that we have external and internal problem, we want to know how does your content will solve that main problem? You can even have a column with a problem and then how will you solve it? So you are being very intentional to make sure that your solution is giving an answer, a direct answer to that problem. And I want you to think of three ways, three categories in which you will solve this problem. And here's where you create your unique perspective, your framework. This is the three ways in which you will address the problem. You're going to offer your audience valuable solutions, but they are not random. They are aligned to a specific category or bucket by way in which you are solving this problem. And these solutions will be the foundation of your authority. These solutions are going to set you apart in your niche because even two podcasters in the same industry can provide entirely different solutions. They can solve the same problem, but the way they do it, their solutions are unique. So your work then in your content is to present the case for your solutions like a lawyer. (laughs) You know, you are saying you have this problem. My solutions are the best way to get to that problem because of X, Y, Z. For example, there's a brand designer I love. She's Christina Blaylor from Jam Creative. She's on Instagram. She's amazing. And I love her because she says that she doesn't offer a brand in a week type of service because she believes that strong brands that have, you know, really deep roots and are standing the test of time, they need time to reveal themselves. She does have a timeline. Don't think that she takes a year to develop a brand, but she doesn't do it in a week. So if she did a podcast, for example, she would solve the problem of not having a standout brand by doing a lot of internal work. She is, I told her on Instagram the other day that I think that she should be like a life coach because she does a lot of internal work, understanding the why behind your brand. She does a lot of self-reflection with her clients. She does such a deep discovery. I'm telling you, she's amazing. But then another designer, another person, maybe they're more about making fast design right? They may tell you, you know what? My solution is to help you make quick design decisions so you don't have to waste time thinking about how your brand looks. Because maybe they think that you need to have a strong brand, but you need to move on with other things of your business. So they are more about speed and making quick decisions. Now, me personally, I love Christina. I would totally stay with her. But another person might be like, I need designer B. I need something quick. I need to be empowered to make quick, fast decisions and move on with the rest of my business. So you see how two people talking about design can have different solutions to the same core problem of design. And it is all anchored in having a clear internal problem defined. Now that we have this solution identify these three buckets of solutions, we are going to the fourth question. And this is a big one. Who are you as a leader? Self-awareness is such a fundamental aspect of leadership. Because to be an effective leader to others, you need to start with being an effective leader to yourself. You need to be able to have the tools to do the things you said you would do, to pick yourself back up, to implement what you're saying. And this year, I had the opportunity of working with an incredibly Gallup-certified coach. Her name is Lila. 
Oh my gosh, I'm giving you so many amazing people recommendations on this episode. You're going to have everyone linked down below. But this person, she worked with me, Lila worked with me, to develop this Gallup methodology. And this methodology has been tested for thousands of people across the globe. I want to say 100 years, but maybe it's not that much, but it's over 50 years of testing for sure. This methodology, they have identified that people lead from one of four domains. We have the executing domain. So this is step-by-step getting things done. You have the influencing domain. So this is moving the group to action. This is very inspirational. Then we have relationship building domain. And this is nurturing strong relationships. And then we have strategic thinking domain. And this is thinking about and analyzing information in a different way. This is a great starting point because sometimes people... They are frustrated because they're trying to be maybe in the executing domain, giving step by step, but then maybe they are in the strategic thinking domain. Maybe they are upset coatings of the world, you know, thinking about things and presenting ideas in a new way. And that is the leadership style that you need to develop and you need to understand how to nurture yourself, correct? Like if you are in the strategic thinking domain, maybe you need to be consuming information and nurture your ideas. Maybe if you lead from your relationships, you need to nurture your relationships in your life. So I encourage you dig deeper and find your leadership style. This is crucial because it empowers you to show up authentically and confidently. You won't seek constant validation from your audience because you will know your worth. And I'm not talking about your worth as a person. That is a different conversation. But I'm talking about your worth as a professional and about what you're bringing to the table through your expertise. Remember, and gosh, this was a tough lesson for me to learn. Your audience's role is not to validate you or to define you as a leader. There will always be someone who doesn't resonate with your style. That's perfectly fine. There are people I admire that I disagree with. Imagine if they stopped showing up because I am not in agreement. Why do you need to know who you are as a leader? Because the more aware you are of yourself, the more impactful leader you will be. So you will need this validation. You will need the applause. You will need them to tell you, you are great, you are enough, because you already know this is my style. If someone told you, you need to be more step-by-step, I would like it better, you would not enter an identity crisis. You would just be confident in knowing that is not the leadership style that I have. If that's what you want, maybe I'm not the person for you. Or maybe you say, you know what? I understand. And actually, there's this amazing person who's a very great at step-by-step. But maybe what if you were open to listening to these ideas so you can challenge your step-by-step? So you see how you can have more powerful conversations that are humble, 100%. They're still trying to help people. But now it's not coming from this place of, please like me, please tell me that I am enough. It is coming from this place of, you know what? What I'm offering is so valuable. Why won't you open yourself to it? And if you really don't like it, it's fine. It's fine. There's always, always going to be someone who doesn't like you. Someone who thinks that your personality is too dry, that you speak too fast, that your accent is too distracting, or maybe they think that you should be more analytical, or maybe they think that you are not a good coach because you're not sweet and soft, and maybe you're too much to the point and they don't like that style. That's why it's so important to know who you are as a leader. So to recap... These are the four decisions you have to make before launching your podcast. You need to decide on the goal. Is it a hobby? Is it for business slash impact? What is the problem? What is the problem you're going to solve? Internal and external. What are your solutions? What are three ways, three buckets in which you're going to solve the problem? Be very specific. The more specific, the better. Then decide on your leadership style because your listener is not there to validate you. They are there to be led by you. So you need to know yourself so you can start leading yourself and therefore be a better leader for your listeners. Take this podcast as an opportunity to go over these decisions. Maybe you have a podcast that is not building your thought leadership as you expected. And maybe you hear this podcast and you're like, huh, I never took the time to go over these decisions. Write them down. 
And I actually have a 30-day plan that takes you through this overall framework and it's a little bit more extensive. It gives you one daily action you can take to optimize your podcast for lead generation. So it goes way deeper than these four decisions, but it's kind of like next step if you really want to revamp your show or if you're about to launch and you want to make sure that everything is in place. It's a 30-day podcast rehab plan. So if you already have a podcast and you want to revamp it, it's perfect for you. So for this, you only have to go to eugeniawoo.com forward slash podcast rehab and you'll be able to get the master class and the 30-day plan. It is amazing. But stay tuned for the next episode. We're not ending today. Next time, we're going to go through the actual step-by-step process of launching your podcast, getting it out there. I will share the exact same process I used to launch my podcast and landed in the top 40 of Apple Podcasts. See you next time. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you loved this episode. If you connected with the podcast in some way, please rate it and review it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. That is the number one way you can support the show. And because sharing is caring, share it with a fellow entrepreneur wanting to become a leader, not just a creator. I am so grateful for you. I'd love to hear from you. Shoot me a DM over to at eugenia.wu. That's at E-U-G-E-N-I-A dot W-O-O. And if you only send me a microphone emoji, I will know that you stay till the end. Thank you for listening. See you soon.